I'm Patrick Bailey with IQless.com. Today is May 18th, 2020. And in this video, I'll be going over printing miniatures with a 0.25 nozzle versus a 0.4 nozzle and see what the difference really is. Okay, first some quick links. So some of these I'll be showing in the in the show here. So I just want to, I'll put in the show notes, but really quickly, here's the Skeletal Wyvern from Rocket Pig Games that I'll be showing. I got some Clockwork Hound going on too. He's really cool. And Plague Doctor and a Griffin. So I'll be showing some of those off. Um, and also, uh, given time, I might, some of these have some strings on them we'll show you. And if you're not familiar, we'll show you how to get rid of them with a heat gun real quick as I look at them. Um, but with that, uh, let's let's show you some interesting things before we show you the prints. So here, I got my slicer open. I'm gonna take the wyvern in here, just dump them in full size. And for me, I like to turn them around. So I'll turn them around facing front. Just want things facing me. And then the nice thing here is I can click on his. And I'm not a real miniatures guy, but I know some of you guys want things really precise and certain certain. Uh, scale. Now you can't come up here and say, you know, 50% yeah, fifty percent scale and scale things down, but you can also come here to the z-axis and say 50 millimeters, and now it's going to be 50 millimeters high. So all the prints I've done today, I think, uh, well, the Griffin and the Wyvern are 50 millimeters, and I got a little Plague Doctor and a Hound, and they're 28 millimeters, which I think 28 millimeters is another size that people use. Um, but here's an interesting thing. So here I am, 0.15 quality, which is typically what you should be using for most things. PLA, Prusa Mini, 15% infill, nothing fancy, and a 0.4 nozzle. Now, I didn't uh, time this one per se, because I've done this a long time ago, but you'll see this one roughly will take an hour and 56 minutes. Now, what I did do is I did do, I wanted to do a true comparison. So what I wanted to do was use a 0.25 nozzle and also go down to 0 0.05 detail on the layer height and then use a 0.25 and a 0.4. So what I did do, you'll see here's an hour and 56 minutes. I dropped it down to 0 0.05 ultra detail and I did it with a 0.4 nozzle. So if I slice this, we'll see it's going to take a lot more time because we're going from 0.15 to 0 0.05. So we're doing three layers per one. So roughly two hours times three should roughly be six hours, maybe six hours plus. And if we let this go, it should come back and show us. There we go, six hours and 42 minutes. So, you know, kind of roughly what we'd think. But if I come in here, and I already set a printer setting, but I'll just do it over here. Extruder, go to my extruder and put in 0.25. I put in 0.25 and now I run it and slice it, assuming there's a 0.25 nozzle. I thought I would increase the time even more, but, and this is a funny thing, I'm, I'm keeping the same layer height, so I'm actually not increasing the time. The time is about the same because I'm following the same pattern, but you gotta take note now, my, now my shell is gonna be thinner. So if I only did two layers, two, uh, if I had two perimeters, those perimeters are now narrower. So if you want to have a perimeter as wide, you'd have to do more, uh, you have to do more perimeters, which that would increase your time. But if you're not doing anything like that, which I don't think you need to for these, your time is kind of the same versus a 0.4 versus a 0.25 at the same lay layer height. So I, that kind of threw me back for a minute. I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense because I guess we are, you know, following the same path. We're just a smaller nozzle, right? So that kind of threw me for a loop. Um, so there's that. So next I will, hopefully I film this. Yeah, next I'll show you quickly how to swap out the nozzle uh, 0 0.4 to 0 0.25, and then we'll go show you the results. Okay, so now I'm going to swap it out to a 0.25 nozzle. I've already preheated it, so now I have it at 280, 281, because you want to get it hot. And then, let's get this off. This is a, I always forget what size this is, 7 millimeters, I thought? Yeah, 7, 7 millimeter. And you're going to want to hold this, like with a crescent wrench or something. Hold on here. Because if I if I merely twist this, I'm going to twist the whole thing, and that's not going to be good. You can do some damage. So I need to hold this heater block. Let me make sure that I am set to unscrew. 
There we go. And this is hot, so be careful. But it should, once it breaks away, it should come off pretty easily. Now, of course, before you do this, make sure you have your filament out, which I have. And then when you get this off, remember it is 280 degrees Celsius. So it is toasty. And I have nothing good to put it on. How about? I'm going to put it on the paper, so. I know, let's see if I can start a fire. Oh, let me go get, uh, let me get something to help. As it melts into the, no. Nah, here, we'll just we'll stick it on this guy. How's that? Let's not start a fire today. I'll just lay it down here. It'll cool off soon enough. Now, I gotta put my tiny little nozzle. I know, it's so tiny. Which I've never done a tiny nozzle, so this should be interesting. In fact, don't do what I'm about to do. Do this by hand just to get it started. But, because that is hot and you will burn your hand. Ooh. There we go, okay, it started. And then I'm gonna just screw it in by hand. And I don't want it to be tight so I don't want to twist. Okay. Then, I don't really need to crank down on it because once it cools off it'll be a little better. Okay, there we go. So I get that oriented correctly. There we go. Probably straighten that out just a tad. Ah. And be careful touching your hand after you do that because it's still hot. I just heard I didn't burn myself, but it was it was hot. Okay, so now I'm done. So now I'm gonna I'll just hit reset. It still needs to cool off. I'll just let it cool down. And then I need to, I'm guessing the nozzle height is going to be a little different, so I should probably, you know, reconfigure my uh, offset on the Z-axis, do a, do a, how do they call it? Calibration. Go to calibration. Well, I know it's a calibration. But they go, first layer. There you go. Do a first layer calibration. So I'll go do a first layer calibration, and then I'll start printing some miniatures with a 0.25 nozzle and a 0.05 layer height, and we'll see how they turn out. Okay, I nearly forgot to go over the numbers. So... Go to the numbers for the skeletal wyvern printed at uh, 50 millimeter height. So for the 0.4 millimeter nozzle, which is the regular nozzle, it took seven hours and 30 minutes to print. It took uh, five cents electricity and it weighs practically nothing. It's 0.06 kilograms as best as I can determine. And at $20 per kilogram, it comes up to 12 cents worth of material. So total cost is 17 cents to print that out. Now with a 0.25 millimeter wyvern, it's about seven hours and 30 minutes as well. It took uh, 5.1 cents electricity, and it weighs about the same 0 .06, 0 0.06 kilograms, which comes out to 12 cents worth of material at $20 per kilogram, and total cost on that was 17 cents as well. Uh, so barely, barely anything, 17 cents, come on. Um, but the interesting thing um, that I didn't think about, because we're printing it so small, if we wanted to make this, if we're printing at 0.15 millimeter uh, size, and we printed a big one, uh, we would probably print about the same amount of time with the same movements. So between the movements and the heat bed being on so long, but because we're so small and so tiny, um, at this level, the electricity is actually a decent portion of the cost. So here we are, we're five cents, roughly five cents of 17 cents electricity. Usually electric, that's almost a third. Um, and usually electricity cost is very minor, very minor, just almost inconsequential. I put it in here so people will know, but when you're printing this small, all of a sudden it becomes more important, um, which brings an idea for a video. I don't know if I would do this, but um, what's the cost electric electrical wise movement versus the heat bed? And I got a feeling the heat bed is probably the majority of the cost. So the longer you keep that heat bed on, uh, the more you're going to have to spend electricity costs. So interesting thought. That could be an interesting video to do, to do something where you don't have a lot of movement or you move really slow. Um, and just watch that heat bed. How, how, what portion of the cost is the heat bed? I bet you it's a, it's a significant amount. But anyway, there's that. Let's go look at the actual prints.
Okay, so going through these one by one, here is a big one that was printed at 0.15 layers with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. And I've shown this before. This is the, the bone wyvern, you know, bone dragon thing. And it's, it looks really good. I like it a lot. And I'll just show that real quickly. But now I've made two little ones at 0 0.05 millimeters. And one thing you might notice on these is you'll see some stringing. And that, that occurs from time to time. There are settings you can do to make things less stringing, but I usually don't fight with that. At this level of stringing, it's not bad. And if you're new to 3D printing, one thing you're going to need is a heat gun. If you don't have a heat gun, go pick one up. I'll put, I put a link in the show notes to one. I like this one, Spark Fun. You don't need a crazy one. They're not that expensive. Um, but the idea is it's kind of like a um, hair dryer on steroids. And so what we need to do is I'll turn this on. And we'll just kind of hit it real quickly, and we'll zoom in, and you'll see these little fibers will quickly pull back. There we go. Now you don't want to just keep the heat gun on them too long because you'll melt, they'll just become a puddle. But here are two. They were done at 0 0.05 millimeters. One was done with a 0.25 nozzle and one with a 0.4. And my wife and I stared at them and we really can't tell much of a difference. And I'll show which was one, which is which here in a second. But if you look at them all, they both look pretty good. They're not bad. Now, the one with the X, that's the 0.25. So this one is the 0.25. And for these, I mean, I can't really tell much of a difference, really. Now, another one we did uh, that I can tell a little difference is, is the Plague Doctor. So I've shown him before. He's pretty cool. Really appropriate for this time. And now I printed him at 28 millimeters, so he's really small. He is tiny. And I did one, oh I know, they're, point, <laughs> they're point 0.5 millimeters, uh, point zero 0.05 millimeter height, but one's 0.25 nozzle and one's a 0.4 nozzle. And yeah, there's not a whole lot of detail at 28 millimeters, but they look, you know, I'm pretty, they look pretty good. It's probably hard to zoom in at both at the same time, huh? Yeah. Maybe I'll just take, I'll take one off. We'll just put one at a time. How about that? Right off of the Wilton. Oh, not that. Oh, okay. Not so. Over here in the light. Uh, and now we're going. <laughs> <laughs> he said to put him off the Wilton. He's off the Wilton. Okay, so. Yeah, you know, for it being so small, it looks pretty good. I'm impressed. So there's that one, we'll put him way over here. And here's the other guy. There's the one cruises around. Now on this one, I could tell a slight difference barely. There, this one's 0.4, this one's 0.25. I don't know if it can show up really well. It might be hard to see. I would say the bone saw looks a little better on the 0.25. I know, and it's just, it's, you'd have to really, st I stared at them for a long time. I really can't tell much of a difference, but I would say the 0.25 was a little bit better. Uh, then we got some other ones. I like this one. This Here's this clockwork hound. He's just cool. And now this is 0.15 with a 0.4 nozzle, just regular sized. He looks really cool. But then I made two versions of him. At 28 millimeters, so he is small. I guess I'll get that one out of the way. So they're not nearly as detailed. Oh my yeah. goodness. I know, it's close. But for the size, he looks pretty good. Not, not quite the detail, but you can see his ribs, and it's not half bad. I know, this is going to be... It's fun filming small little things, huh? 
And here's the other arm. There we go, trying to get some light on there. The Mesa did a pretty good job, in my opinion. But then we have that one's 0.4, and that one's 0.25. That's the 0.25, and I can't really tell the difference. So layers are more important than the nozzle for, for these, I mean. Then there's the Griffin, which I think is really cool. I just like the Griffin. There's a the regular size one. Now for the Griffin, um, I forgot to print him in 0.4, so he's printed, this is just a 0.25. That's all I've got. And he looks, and he's 50 millimeters high. And he looks pretty good. I think he looks, you can see a lot of detail in there from his feathers. But I don't have a 0.4 millimeter version. But this one has a lot of detail. I, I think it turned out really well. So in conclusion, uh, with, with miniatures, I don't think you need the 0.25 nozzle, but it doesn't hurt. It doesn't take any more time, so I think you probably get a little more detail. Um, so it doesn't hurt to put them on, but I don't think you, you only get, a, you know, <clears throat> you'd have to compare different models. Like maybe if I do this one, the 0.4, it might not be as good. I don't know. I need to go do that. But the other ones, it's hard to tell a difference. You know, it's the layer height. Okay, so as we filmed this, the focus was kind of in and out sometimes. So you might not be able to see all the detail that you'd like to see, that I'd like you guys to see. So I took some pictures here, kind of have them floating by here at the end. So you can see probably a little more detail than might have come through on the video. Overall, um, you know, I'm pretty happy with them. But I think I, I don't think there's a problem going with the 0.25 nozzle, but I don't see a whole lot of benefit. But again, it's just swapping out a nozzle, so it's not a big deal. And you're, you're definitely not going to lose quality, and you hopefully you gain a little bit. So I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence.